wanted to make a quick video demoing my new hole guides for teapots and um, this is going to become a soap dish but anything where you want a regular pattern of holes what because I had one of these made um, just for me a while ago and people had asked about it so these are laser cut and then it's a how well you can see that on the camera. Yeah, there we go. Um, acrylic laser cut um, guide with two mil holes uh, a set distance apart. So eight mil apart, 12 mil apart, um, 16 mil apart. And then those are the larger patterns. And these are literally just the, the grid of seven. So you have a choice of a smaller one or a more uh, inclusive one that covers a bit more distance. And then what I would use it for is for something like this. While it's still on the wheel, you can check. That's pretty good. So that's centered. What you do is either pin it in place with a needle tool, and I'll send them out with a two mil drill bit so it fits perfectly through the hole. And then you can just mark each hole. I'm not going all the way through because I've got to wire this off and trim it and then I'll add these holes later but um, I put my holes in with drill bits anyway so um, if you're using one of the tube cutters which I don't have one to hand but you know the, the, the tubes that are cut at an angle this will give you a center point but you'd have to center it but if you're using a drill bit then obviously it will go straight in um, and on leather hard clay they cut really well so I would recommend using a drill bit anyway just because it's easier to position um, Possibly a bit more faff for you making big holes, but um, yeah, they're quite handy. Um, but then that's it. So you now have a grid of holes perfectly positioned. I'll wait until that's, well, I'll wire it off, um, trim the bottom, and then once it's firmed up, I can finish the holes through from this side. So this is the dish with the uh, marks on the upper surface. Nothing coming through the bottom. Um, what I'm gonna do is give it a very quick trim. But what I would do now is supporting it from the back. Just doesn't matter so much with these size holes, but um, you should always drill from the center out because uh, obviously each time you widen a hole, you're making the, the clay weaker there. So if you did all the outer holes, by the time you got to the middle, the clay would actually, well, you might well collapse it. But I used the 16 mil gap um, guide for this, which means that you could basically use any size drill bit you wanted up to probably 14 mil would be pushing it but that would leave you two mil between the edges of the holes and the nice thing with these is they really don't need to be good drill bits you could actually assuming you have drill bits for the more intended purpose when they start getting blunt and towards the point at which you'd throw them out that's when they become quite useful for pottery I mean obviously sharper drill bits is better but um, but they don't need to be this works best when the clays leather hard-ish 
probably on the drier side of leather hard. You want when if you do carvings, the sort of dries where you get the really crisp lines is good for this. If they're too dry, then the back of the hole will be um, really messy as it comes through, which you can get round by if you carve from one side and then only go halfway and then come back through the other. But um, best if you can just time it right. And while I was trimming this, I didn't trim a foot on because I'm trying to work out what the best weight of clay is. This was thrown with 250 grams and I don't actually know how big it is in diameter. But either I need to throw with more clay so that the base can be a bit thicker or make it smaller or do what I'm going to do with this which is add a slip foot um, which I have to say is one of my favourite ways of doing it just because rather than having to trim all of the clay out and just leaving a very small amount you're adding the clay to it. So you can see they haven't hasn't cracked around the holes on that um, which means that this is pretty much spot on the right level of dryness. I don't actually know, I think this is a 10mm drill bit. You see what I mean about weakening the clay? There's not that much clay left between the holes. If you were then trying to, if you did all the ones around the centre hole and then tried to do the centre hole, you might well lose it. Whereas this way, each hole is still reasonably supported when you're cutting it. Okay, a lot of drainage holes. So if this is the soap or um, sponges or what I initially made these for, baby bottle drainers. Yep, it's all I've got. It's a countersinking bit. Again, very useful. Takes the burr off. Actually, not following my own advice from starting from the centre there, but it doesn't matter quite so much with this because it's not as aggressive as the drill bits. But yeah, we should do it right. We have the countersinking bit, it's basically just an angled drill bit. But what it does is it puts a 45 degree angle on the hops, which basically takes all the work out of cleaning it up. You're not trying to manually neaten around it. You just spin this in the hole for a second and um, get a nice angle to the taper. The glazes pick it up really nicely, assuming you're using anything um, translucent or with any movement. It gives a kind of compound, well, a multi-angle hole for it to break over. So you'll see kind of two different surfaces where it breaks. Um, but the main the thing I like about this more than any other way of cleaning the hole up is just how quick it is. So now that looks pretty perfect. I mean, I go back over once it's even more dried out. Um, but that all done. What I would then do is I've got some of the same clay as a slip in one of these little seam applicator bottles. left in there so this might not work as well as intended now that looks all right um, set the wheel turning slowly so 
So not the neatest I've ever done it, but what you've got there is a raised foot from slip. And um, that'll give you a little bit of height so water can run un out underneath it. The other thing you could do, and I was considering doing and we'll try on the next one, is you could just do decent sized um, slip dots so the water can actually flow completely underneath, which I think would work even better. But that's it. That's how I'm going to use those new guides.